how are you? Top of the day, afternoon, evening to you. The scripture that I'm going to be talking about today, a little tidbit, is from Philippians 2 and 13, the Amplified Bible Translation. For it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work. That is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. And the King James Version of that same uh, verse is, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is God who worketh in you and I, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And again, that's Philippians 2 and 13. My little tidbit today is wanting to be loved. People have gone, especially in this generation, in my generation, from wanting to be loved to, I don't need anybody. And so we have engulfed ourselves in our career or our ministry, or in the acquisition of money or stuff. And after we have attained, or are in the process of obtaining the status that we want in career or ministry, or have bought the big house, the car, have traveled, have, a, have accumulated a large amount or at least a nice amount of money, we find that something is missing. So we continue to do more and more to buy more, to get more, to obtain more. But it's still something missing. I've seen many women sit into their beautiful uh House beautiful home, picture perfect, with designer uh, furniture and excellent, everything is immaculate. It looks like a five star hotel, perhaps. And they sit there and they are empty. Wanting to be loved. Everything that is alive has a innermost soul thirsting longing to be loved. Oh, the religious world has told us that as long as you got God, that's enough. And yet many young people, young women in particular, because our center is based on core of us based on the need for love. Many young women have sought the Lord and did all they could in, to work in church and was very faithful and everything else and yet that longing was still there after the service was up, after the dinner is over, after the socializing is over and they're going back to their home. The want is there. Wanting to be loved. And they prayed. And the mothers told us to fast. And when we got through praying and fasting. We still. The wanting was still there. Wanting to be loved. 
Many just gave up on God because they said it was a lie, that he does not fulfill your needs. I still want to be loved, and, and there's no one loving me. And God, you seem like you failed me because they told me, told you if, if, if you asked, he would give you anything you wanted, which that is not true at all. Scripture says, if you delight yourself in God first, commit your ways, delight yourself in God, then he will give you the desires of your heart. But, this, but your heart, our hearts, will be transformed into what God wants for us as we commit ourselves to him and make ourselves happy in him. It's relationship that brings about the delight. It's relationship that brings about the contentment. It's relationship that brings about the I am happy or content in what God has chose for me. Excuse me, my eye is a little dry this morning. Wanting to be loved. So I've attained the house. I've attained the car. I've attained the jury. I've attained the bank account. I've obtained the career. I've obtained status symbol. And yet, when I go home in my house, I still want to be loved. I did all the church told me to do. The preacher told us to do. Pastors. Some of you became pastors, some ministers, some sort, but we still want to be loved. What's wrong with me? Why is it I still want to be loved? I want somebody to tell me that they care. I want somebody to tell me that they admire me. As a woman, I want somebody to tell me I'm beautiful. As a man, now I don't know about men, but I can only speak for women, but I will surmise that you want someone to tell you that you're valuable and perhaps even handsome. Wanting to be loved. Many have taken down their standard just to have somebody to say, I love you. Even though in your heart of your heart, you may not fully believe they mean it, but at the moment, it's what you needed. I'm not judging it. Violated things that you even believed in and were taught in just to have someone pretend that they love you. No judging here. That need began to be so intense until it was mind-boggling. You're almost willing to do whatever. Pay for love. And many women have paid for love. Bought him everything you could think of. Bought him everything he, he thought he wanted. Just so I can hear him say he loves me. Even if I don't feel it, just hear him say it. Wanting to be loved. Perhaps it is not you that I speak to today, but I assure you, someone that you know I speak to. Feel free to share this if you know someone like this. God has placed in us, I say a GPS love tractor, GPS tracker, that tracks when there's someone that is willing to love. We wanting to be loved, someone who is willing to love. Now, the issue is the level of maturity of that person's love. Because some love is love on condition. Some love is love just for the moment. Some love is love, well, I love you and I love other people too and no commitment love. But my purpose this morning is to tell you, my dear friend, my dear daughter, I speak mostly to women, but 
you're welcome, the men also, to listen. I speak to let you know that it's okay for what you are feeling on the inside. It has been implanted in you by the Heavenly Father to want to be loved. You fought it. You've hated yourself for it because of the things you may have done to get that feeling of somebody, anybody, just love me. Somebody, anybody, just tell me I'm valuable, I'm beautiful, anybody. And so anybody comes along. The Bible says his words were smoother than butter. And he loves, he does what he calls love you for a season. A second, a moment. And then he's gone. Wanting to be loved. It's okay to want to be loved. It's okay to have the need to love. It is time to, to acknowledge and to accept the fact that you do want to be loved. And I'm not necessarily talking about love of, of, an, of, of, of another person. I mean, of just anyone or whatever, uh, of a sister or a brother. But I'm speaking of that love that goes, that goes beyond um, just a friendship. Women. You want a husband. You want someone to cover, to, sh to, to protect, to provide, to cherish, to nurture, to warm in their bosom. You. Wanting to be loved. It's okay to know that that, and it's first, you must realize it is time to acknowledge the fact that after all has been said and done, the ministry, the career, the accumulation of stuff, you still have the desire to want to be loved. Some have resorted to acquisition of beautiful pets that will give us unconditional love. But if you be honest with yourselves, and of course, there are always exceptions. If you are an exception, then pray for your sister who is not an exception. The animals, our pets, our dogs, our cats, our birds, or whatever your particular uh, love animal is, they give us love as we give them love. I work at an a animal shelter, a uh, sanctuary where when animals are unadoptable, they go there and they live their life out there. And I go there and I... I see so many kitties that just hundred and some fifty kitties that are longing just some touch me, just touch me, just look in my eyes and tell me that you love me, just rub me, just let me sit by you. It is heart drenching, mind boggling to see the kitties just longing, just for love. And you and I are no different. As much as we may try to deny it. To say that I don't need anybody. You have been given a DNA within the core of every fiber of your being to long to be loved. That's the first step. To acknowledge it. To stop denying it. To stop trying to replace it with stuff or things. Oh, it won't happen overnight. But at least to begin the journey, things will not place and fill the need for you longing to be loved. There is a healing that must take place. There is a healing. And the first step of the healing is to acknowledge the fact that I do long to be loved. Yes. Miss, don't need nobody. Miss Strong is I don't know what. Sir, don't need anything. Can do anything that a woman can, can, can do. Yes, I do long to be loved. And I want to encourage you today. The first step is to acknowledge that you long to be loved. And that's the first step of your healing. As we will continue this, this series. But the first step, look into your heart of heart. 
Go into your secret, quiet, quiet place and ask yourself, what is that nagging, nagging feeling that I feel and I can't seem to satisfy, so I satisfy it with addictions? Whatever those addictions may be. Alcohol, food, sex, pornography, buying, shopping, I don't know, workaholic, whatever the addiction is, that thing that you keep giving, you've tried to, 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 to use that thing, that stuff, that addiction to cover to put a band-aid on the hemorrhage of your need to be loved god wants to heal you god wants to free us your longing to be loved has been placed in your dna by god and let me go back to the scripture. Philippians 2 and 13. I'm reading the Amplified and then I'll read the, read the King James. For it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work, that is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. King James Version. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He has placed in you and I a longing to be loved for his good pleasure. First step is to acknowledge that you have a longing to be loved. And now we're going to trust God to bring about the healing so that you can accept love and so that love will draw itself to you. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, everyone who is at listening to the sound of my voice, I put in them a healing that you have placed in them. For you said you are the Lord that healeth us. A healing to pull back the scabs, the scar tissue of their heart. That once again, they can feel the longing to be loved. The scabs of denial and rejection. The scab that says, I don't need anybody because I don't trust anyone. The scab that says, I will never, ever have anyone hurt me again. Therefore, I will never truly love again. Bring about that healing. Let the healing begin under the sound of my voice. And the first step be, I acknowledge, Father, that I need to be loved. And I acknowledge, Father, that you can bring about the healing that I may be able to receive love. God bless you. I am Dr. Sandra Scott Wright. And you can find me on Facebook. I'm going to sing by closing. It's gonna be alright. That's just the way God planned it. It's gonna be okay. So hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. God's gonna see you through. Hold on, hold on, hold on. God's gonna see you through. 
hold on. 